Hey everybody, it's Jay, and today I'm drawing a tattoo-inspired Tamagotchi. I'm working on really small paper, it's actually 4 by 6 inches, and it's cold-pressed watercolor paper. I'm starting out by laying down my design lightly with a mechanical pencil. I love mechanical pencils because you don't have to sharpen them. So I got the idea to do this piece because I recently got a tattoo of a Game Boy, and I wanted to see what some other nostalgic childhood things would look like in a tattoo format. I've actually never had a Tamagotchi, but I always wanted one when I was a kid. What I had instead was this god-awful knockoff. I think it had a name like 100 Pets in One with like an exclamation point or something. My parents got this for me at a tourist trap gift shop while we were on a beach vacation after some substantial begging on my part. I was probably about seven and I was so excited to get the thing running. I thought it was going to be some elaborate pet simulation with all these different pets to choose from, all with their unique, adorable design. In actuality, all 100 pets looked about the same, a pixelated blob in the middle of the screen. The thing would beep at you if your pet needed to eat, at which point you'd press a button to feed it, or if your pet had made a mess, and then you'd press a different button to clean it up. That was all there was to it. You'd pick out your perfect precious blob, and then you'd obey its beeping commands to press one button or another. If you neglected the pet for more than a few hours, it would beep one last time, and then the tiny screen would announce that your pet had died. This meant that every morning of that vacation, I woke up heartbroken, finding that my virtual pet had died because I neglected it while I was asleep. A few years later, I had a much better virtual pet. This one never died. Um, it was a littlest pet shop Tamagotchi knockoff, but somebody actually put some time and money into this one. Um, it had a bunch of mini games, and your pet was a little golden retriever, and you could take it on walks and meet its friends, and it would do a little dance when you fed it. Um, it was really cute, and I liked it a lot. Um, it was a lot closer to what I think the Tamagotchi games were like, but correct me if I'm wrong. I almost found out for myself. Uh, last year, I was working at Toys R Us right before the company went bankrupt, and I almost bought my very own Tamagotchi. But the ones they were selling looked a little different than what I'm drawing. It was the, the new version. Um, but I ended up never shelling out the 11 bucks or whatever it was to get one because what adult person needs a virtual pet? I already have a lot of real pets. And I have like 10 virtual pet games on my smartphone. So I guess I officially missed the Tamagotchi craze. But I still appreciate any good virtual pet game. And from the mass success of the toy, I believe it was exactly that. So back to the art. After I finished the pencil drawing, I went back and lined the piece with a black micron brush pen. These are one of my favorite art supplies. I use them all the time, and I have several different colors of the same pen. I like brush pens because they make it super easy to vary your line width, but there's the downside that it's hard to get a perfect uniform line. But this isn't a real tattoo, so it's not a big deal if the lines aren't perfect. Um, this is also an older pen, and these pens develop an issue towards the end of their lives where you start to see a few of the brush hairs splaying out. So if you see a few really small lines bordering the actual line work, it's because the pen is old. I really need to get a new one. So after I finished the line work, I went in with some watercolor paint. Watercolor is one of my favorite mediums. It's great for illustrative work, and it's great for people who are more drawing artists than painting artists, and I definitely fit that bill. The palette I'm using is one I put together myself. It's housed in a Mead and Watercolor brand tin, which came from Amazon, and it's in a really nice pastel pink color, so it's very aesthetic. Since I put it together myself, it has a few different brands of paint. Firstly, I have two M. Graham paints. These are really nice, really expensive paints, and I only have them because I used to have an art subscription box that would send me premium art supplies that I couldn't have afforded otherwise. Um, maybe I'll splurge and get some more super pricey paints in the future, but you definitely don't need expensive paints to make good art. I didn't actually use either of those paints in this piece anyway. Next up, the bulk of the colors in this palette are Shinhan Professional Watercolors. Paint stabs probably wouldn't consider these professional watercolors. They're a lot less expensive than Amgram or Winsor & Newton paints at about $30 for 375 milliliter tubes. But I'm really happy with them, and I might review them later. They're definitely the nicest full set of paints that I own. Lastly, my palette is rounded out with a few economy paints, a set of 12 authentic Chinese watercolors that can be yours for less than $7 on dickblick.com. 
uh, not sponsored. <laughs> I found a discarded set of these paints in a spare supplies cupboard when I was in art school, and I honestly have no idea why they were left behind. These paints are great quality for the money, and I've gone through a few sets of them so far. I may review these as well, as they're a really great entry-level watercolor. So I'm almost done, and I'm really happy with how this piece turned out. It was also really fun to make. Um, I think I'm going to make this video into the very first of a series of Toys Turn Tattoos, so let me know in the comments if there's anything from your childhood that you would love to see in this style. Thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of my content. Have a great day, and stay creative. Bye!